All right, guys, so I live next to the freeway. It's really loud outside. It's hard to hear what I was saying, but introduction goes. Hi, guys, my name is Lauren Myers. I'm here to share with you today flip-up bike rack I made for my van. Here's how it raises, and here is how I lower it. Now, this next scene I fast-forwarded. It's lengthy. If you'd like to, you can skip through it, but it's just a procedure of how I load my bikes onto the back of the van. And now with the bikes up and out of the way, you can access the back as if there was no bikes ever in the way. You could sit on the bumper and get your gear ready for the ride. You could incorporate some type of sun awning up here to shade you. And if you're to live in your van or sleep in your van overnight, you would potentially have an extra escape. If there's ever an emergency, you wouldn't be dependent on these front doors. Assuming you kept the rack up overnight. Um, but yeah, unfortunately I haven't designed a lanyard yet to give me extra leverage or access to reach the thing. So I do have to jump to pull it down. <laughs> of course you would never have it down like that with the doors open. But yeah, I'll uh, go through and show you all the little tidbits about it that make it work. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna climb on top of my van. Haven't made a ladder yet. So how this works is I've built a roof rack for my van. Just uses the factory bolt holes. And then I added new holes back there just to kind of distribute the weight better towards the back. Those are anchored in just to the drip rail. And then from the existing rack that I built is where this new rack attaches. I just bolted it on using heim joints, one simple hole through both sides. And then I'm using hydraulic shocks on both sides. And then I'll go ahead and hop down. And then those shocks are anchored into the door frame, this pillar back here. I used uh, nut certs, just uh, bolted to this post and uh, clears the door perfectly. That was the hardest challenge of this whole build. And not only did I want to clear the door, but I also wanted it to open all the way. So I've muted this next clip. It's just hard to hear what's going on with the freeway sounds. I uh, went to the junkyard and got a latch piece from a Chevy S15 Blazer from the 90s. It was a part of the swing out tire carrier. And then also grabbed the lower corresponding piece, the uh, strike plate that that same latch connects to. So this thing just bites into there like a snapping turtle. And then I designed a lever, same lever from that S15 added uh what would you call that i mean they're kind of like himes with the return spring so there's the latch it's getting caught on the bike strap but it's pretty smooth like really smooth i'm proud of it and that opens the uh striker that lifts up here's the back side so you can get a different view of how that works here's the actual strike bolt and then inside the door, I had to reinforce the frame because that's just a lot of, I guess, pressure you could say on the door. So I put this big, thick, heavy 
three sixteenth inch plate in here. And I use two couplings on each end, two of those. And then I bolted it to the exterior of the interior door frame, if that makes sense. And basically took the load that would end up on the body of the door and sent it to this reinforced piece right here. It's kind of the same area where the door hinges are, so it's really strong. And now we can take the pressure. It's not perfect, but it will be because I'm going to keep working at it. The bikes are nice and secure. And that's two bikes on there. But yeah, I could see this working with almost any type of vehicle. Even one with a lift gate, you could just piggyback it right on top of it. It wasn't really that hard to make. Uh, you can make it as simple or as complex as you want it to be. You don't really have to have all the features that I added. Um, added a bushing right here into the license plate frame. Just extra shock dampening. And then when I designed this, I didn't really realize how close to the body I was gonna be. So I just put a rad pad right here off of a BMX bike. Helps out quite a bit. I didn't paint this whole locking mechanism because I'm not done with it yet. I wanna change it up. I'm gonna cut these off. It would not feel good to get your hand slammed in there. So those gotta go. I'm probably gonna put another rubber hockey puck just right there. Um, and these are really ugly. Haven't finished designing them just yet. But so far I'm really happy with it. I mean, it works flawless. I haven't had any issues with it. Handles the weight just fine. It's a cold day, which is kind of funny because I can tell the shocks are having a harder time than like last week when the temperatures were almost in the 80s. Today's probably like 50s, maybe 60s. It's just a different pressure in the shocks based on temperature, but even on a cold day like this, it's still doing just fine. So here's me having to jump to reach it. It's locked. Not going anywhere. Finally, I will say my only concern with this is redundancy. It needs more safety features. Um, these shocks can come off pretty freaking easy. Like if I were to yank on this that way, or if someone didn't know what they're doing, they try to use this as like a handle to get up to reach the top. Dude, that would be so dangerous. It would blow off. So I'm thinking of making some kind of like push pin toggle that will lock this in the upright position. That way it's safe to stand under, have your kids under, all that. And the only reason I really built this was because of my son. I, uh, I just didn't feel comfortable having my bikes in the back anymore with him. Everything back here is just strapped down. I keep it that way. Don't like any potentials for hazard. Got the bikes out of the van, which now poses a uh, risk of theft, but rather deal with that than anything else so that's where the bikes are now <laughs> and it'll make it a lot easier for my family to go camping you know we'll have all this room in the back and so this will also hold my son's little bicycle trailer on the back we fit it right there in the middle and it'll still lift and lower it just fine with that on there uh i got both my bikes on here right now but normally i'd have my girlfriends on there so it's definitely set up for family stuff stoked about it we've been getting on quite a bit of rides lately kitty trailer on the back it's mounted up pretty high makes it a little easier on the gas struts yeah this thing is like a family backpack or I guess a backpack, you know, it's the back of the van, packs everything in there. Here it is lifting everything. 
struggling, but he got it up. Oh yeah, I uh, kind of just sloppily threw it on there. Just kind of tethered it in with one strap, but yeah, that's everything up there. Now I can access the back. I love this thing. Pull it down. Hopefully it shuts okay. Cool. Yeah. Dig it. All right, little honesty hour here. I don't want to be that guy that shows you something, makes you think that it's absolutely perfect when it's not. My welds, they're trash. I'm getting better though. Uh, downsides to this, you got to jump to pull it down unless if you're taller than I am significantly. Uh, some people might not be strong enough to pull it down when it's unloaded. I mean, if it's strong enough to lift all three of these individual pieces up in the air including the rack itself which also weighs quite a bit it's gonna be pretty pretty tough to pull down so when it's unweighted it's pretty tough i can do it i can do it with one hand i have to jump it's a little bit of a struggle it's not really that annoying it's honestly not a big of a deal for others it might be i also weigh 205 i'm a big boy uh so my weight is also helping me with that factor my girlfriend cannot pull it down. She got trapped in a parking lot the other day and two dudes had to come and help her. So yeah, she's got her own car thankfully, but every now and then she'll need to drive this. So I'm gonna need to design some type of like crank down device, something for her, or maybe just keep one strap mounted, you know, when I'm, it's not in use. That way it's enough to uh, hopefully pull down with a lanyard for someone her size. It's not perfect. I don't want to lead you guys on thinking it is perfect. It works well for me. I'm happy with it. It works really well for this type of stuff, but definitely has some drawbacks. And then the other most important one, in my opinion, safety. I wouldn't let my kids stand underneath this. Not yet. It's going to need some type of safety lockinism mechanism with a lock on it. You know, then I'll feel better about it. But I'll have to design something. So I'm fast forwarding this part. It was a complete struggle to get this thing off. Uh, I'm going to make some type of actual mount for it though, because I really like it there and it works great. That was annoying. I'm gonna need to design a better mounting system for that because that's not gonna work. Okay, so. Wasn't that bad. Now, here, there's nothing to it. Once you get past like this point, things start to get tough. And here, it's pretty strong. So if you can get it to about here, you can manage. All right, so we are behind the scenes back at my house. Here's a pleasant view of my dog's booty. We see girl. And I'll be putting this video together and uploading it on YouTube. If you like what you had to see, please like this thing. I uh, plan on sharing more of my builds with you guys. That's what I like to do. I like to build stuff and play with We See Girl. Do a German Shepherd. And yeah, so I'll try and get more videos for you guys. Thanks. Bye now. Bye, We Bye. Say bye. Say bye. Nope. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.